Hi guys and welcome back to chapter 8. We are now on video 3. The last thing we did, which kind of was incomplete, was the loss minimization part. So we were looking at the fact that right now the average total cost is above the price. When you have an average total cost that is above the price, greater than the price, this company is losing. It's just trying to lose as little as possible. Now, losing as little as possible doesn't mean, remember, when the price drops, what happens to quantity supplied? It follows. So a company realizes, oh, we're not, the price is dropping. We have to cut back on production. What this is telling you is there is a particular level they need to cut back to. They can't cut back indefinitely down. There is such a thing where if they cut back further, they would actually end up with greater losses, which is why I want you to watch the video where I show you all that as I construct it one at a time. But basically what we need to do here is one of two things have to happen in order to bring the price back above the ATC so this company stops having to minimize losses and go into profit maximization. Either the price has to rise, so either demand, and let's assume this is demand too, has to rise, and if demand increases, then what would happen at this point is you will end up with a price because here's the intersection right here of marginal revenue and marginal cost, but it can go up here. Once the intersection is up here, then this is where the average total cost is and it ends up being lower than the new price or the average total cost has to shrink. In other words, this company has to find a way to lower, for instance, get a new supplier, swap out one, one part of their operation more than one with a different cheaper product. Think of our food and how our food has become like no food. There's like no food in our food if you buy processed foods because of two things, shrinkflation, which means the amount of food that they give you is like the same price might be, but they give you less and less. And the quantity is, is the quality is terrible, right? Like we have all these, instead of real ingredients, like instead of olive oil, for instance, you have something like um, soybean oil or canola oil, which really are really bad for your heart. And, and, but they're not, even butter is better for you than that. But those ingredients, the good ones are more expensive, so they swap them up with something cheaper. Or maybe they will in incorporate more technology and consequently end up, um, you know, lowering the average total cost. Maybe they can, you know, find a way to become more efficient with their operations. So one of these two things has to happen to, re to go back to a profitable level. Now, what happens when demand um, increases, right? What happens here? When demand increases, I need to stop using that. Okay, what happens when demand increases? When demand increases, here are the steps that happen. Price increases temporarily. Prices increase temporarily only to drop back down again due to increased total production. So what happens? Equilibrium price rises. We go from here to here. I'm going to walk you through it in a minute. The existing firms increase the available quantity supplied, right? Because... So the law of supply tells us that quantity supplied follows the price. Um, new firms enter the market as a result of higher prices. Prices. So what's going to happen is the number of sellers is going to rise. That's actually a shift in the supply curve. It's no longer just the quantity is rising, but there are more sellers. Therefore, it is a non-price determinant. Supply itself will increase. Um, the uh, we have a rightward shift. The price falls. Um, um, it, you know, because of increased supply question is where to, so let's look at this particular scenario. It's possible. It'll go back to exactly where it was. It's possible. It'll fall somewhere higher, like in this example, or it'll fall somewhere lower. The reason I made it where it falls higher is because this is the case for most products. If you think about what you buy from year to year, wouldn't you say that, you know, the coffee you buy out is a little bit more expensive. The rent has gone up a little bit. Um, if not your mortgage, maybe the insurance on, on your homeowner's insurance maybe went up a little bit. If you own a car, if not your payment, again, maybe the insurance or the gas in your car or the tires you have to buy. Basically, from year to year, the average prices are higher. So look at what's happening here. We start right here. At first, you have one demand curve and one supply curve, and they intersect right here, and this is price one. This is price one is where the prices are, let's say $5. But then the demand curve shifts to the right. Because demand increases, this is, this is what the question is, and we said, well, the demand curve shifts to the right, it's going to cause the equilib equilibrium price to temporarily spike up. So it goes from price one to price two. So let's say $7. 
But I say temporarily because the supply is going to respond to that. As prices rise and the quantity supplied rises, apparently I have forgotten to turn off my phone. Sorry about that, guys. I will now. Okay. So, um, when, uh, when the supply responds and the supply shifts to the right, it's going to bring the prices back down again. This is why the, the nature of the market is a cyclical one. So, first it'll spike up, then it'll drop. Where does it drop? Notice, not as low as before. Here's price 3. So, price 3 could be $6. So, first we started at $5. Demand increases. It brings the prices all the way up to 7 right here to price 2. But then the supply increases and that brings it back down to six dollars at price three this is the long-term price so now we have something called the long run supply curve the long run supply curve is going to run from equilibrium one to equilibrium three sorry i'm just i really this is like ridiculously hard for me when i try to do these things so you see how it's upward it's moving up when you go from equilibrium one to equilibrium three equilibrium three is higher and because you have an upward or upswinging long run supply curve this is rather an increasing cost industry so let's go to the increasing cost industry in the long run there are three types of cost industries you have constant cost you have increasing cost you have decreasing cost what is a constant cost industry let's look right there so this is what the firm is doing. This is what the industry is doing. So we know it's perfectly competitive. It looks like what we talked about before. Here are the four curves that matter. The price, the marginal revenue, the average total cost, and the marginal cost. Those are the four. Without them, you don't really know what's happening with this firm. Here's the industry. So in this industry, the long run supply curve is horizontal because First, you had this demand and this supply, demand one and supply one. They're not just marked demand and supply, like, like zero, like demand zero, supply zero. The original equilibrium price was at point A, but then the demand increased. See how we have like a shift, a rightward shift in the demand curve right here. Now we are, where's the equilibrium at point B? So if the price originally was, let's say $10, the price is now, let's say temporarily $11. But then when the supply shifts to the right, it brings it back down exactly back to $10. Therefore, the long run supply curve is rather horizontal. When you see that, it means the prices were 10, temporarily they became higher, then they fell back to 10. This is a constant cost industry. Some things fall in this category, something like the price of pumpkins. Think of something that hardly changes price from year to year. Um, it changes price, but so slowly that it's almost like the price never changes. They tend to be things like um, pumpkin comes to mind, squash comes to mind. So certain mining operations might might have a pretty constant, uh, like a, when you know when not much technology enters the industry and the output remains relatively the same. It, it can be. So there are some industries like that, but they're not the most common industries. Obviously, the most common industry is this one: increasing cost industry. So look at what's happening here. This is like the first one I showed you. You have demand, it's in red. You have supply, it's in green. But then, so here's our equilibrium one. But then when the demand increases, right? And then the supply follows, what they, so temporarily it goes up to here, right here. You see where it is right here? Every time I do the draw thing, I think I like, it goes up to here. So first we're here. This is equilibrium one. Then the demand increases. It goes from demand one to demand two. It brings us up to this equilibrium. And you can see that this equilibrium here, which is equilibrium two, is higher than equilibrium one. And then the supply shifts to the right. It goes from the light green to the dark green, and it puts us here. And the, so, Price starts at 10, let's say, it goes up to 12, let's say, it comes back down to 11, and 11 is greater than 10. So this is why you have an upsloping long-run supply curve, and this is an increasing cost industry, and this is pretty much most things. I mean, think of how high inflation was this year. It's unusual. COVID, supply chain interruptions going on around the world, war in Ukraine, there have been so many reasons for why this is the case. But what we're looking at right here is that 
in general, from year to year, most things become more expensive. Now, we also have a decreasing cost industry, and this is the last point we're going to make in this chapter. A decreasing cost industry, the long run supply curve is down sloping. So what's happening here is first you have demand and supply converging at point A. This is the price right here at point A. This is where we start. But then the demand curve shifts to the right. Because the demand shifts to the right, it brings us up to equilibrium 2. Equilibrium 2 has a greater price, you see, than equilibrium 1, which is right here. So it makes the price go up. But then when supply shifts to the right, as you see here, it brings it back down only way lower. So when you draw a curve here from equilibrium one to equilibrium three, it's down sloping. So this might be something that we, we see in time becoming actually cheaper. So for instance, electronics later on, you know, some of their components end up actually being, um, they're considered homogeneous in some, in, in some ways. Maybe over time, this be, actually becomes cheaper. So some things do that. But if you think about it overall, I mean, this happened with clothes. Clothes really just became cheaper from year to year in the long run. Um, but the most common one continues to be an increasing cost. As a matter of fact, typically what you find is the most typical elasticity of demand is elastic. The most typical cost industry is increasing cost industry. Um, the, um, what else? The, the marginal, um, revenue, you know, for companies and the marginal costs for companies tend to be challenging in, in the long run. It is hard to keep the marginal revenue from dropping over time. And it's really hard, um, to keep the marginal cost from rising over time. Okay. You guys have a great one. I'm going to say my big thank you to you. I hope you have a beautiful day, a sunny day, wonderful images like these images to hopefully simplify economics and make it a little bit more, more palatable to you. Okay. Have a great one. I will see you in the, the next chapter.